rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing, and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Jesus, the Saviour, reigns, the God of truth and love. When he had purged our state, he took his seat above. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice, again I say, rejoice. His kingdom cannot fail, he rules on earth and hell. The keys of death and hell are to our Jesus' skin. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. He sits at God's right hand, till all his foes submit, and bow to his command, and fall beneath his feet. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. Good morning. Welcome to St. Mike and all the Angels Episcopal Church in Inverness for our Mass on this Sunday, which we keep as the Feast of Christ the King, the last Sunday in our church's year. The Sunday once referred to as the Sunday next before Advent or Stir Up Sunday. That we keep it as the Feast of Christ the King and think of Christ in glory as we come to this service in prayer and in worship. A special welcome to those of you who join online and who cannot be here in person. We pray that Christ the King will make his presence known with you where you are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, to whom to all hearts, hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the mysteries of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord our Father, we confess, we confess to you and to our fellow, fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son, who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you. For your glory, 
he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading in the book of the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered. On a day of clouds and thick darkness, I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder 
and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set over you one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed you. He shall feed you and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be your God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. A reading in the letter of St Paul to the Ephesians. St Paul says, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which you have been called. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named not only in this age but also in the age to come and he has put all things under his feet and has made him head of all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Christ whose glory fills the skies, Christ the true, the only light, Son of righteousness arise, Triumph o'er the shades of night, Day spring from on my being near, Day in my heart appear. Dark and cheerless is the morn, unaccompanied by thee. Joyless is the day.
days return Till thy mercy's beams I see Till they inward light impart Let my eyes adorn my heart Visit then this soul of mine Pierce the gloom of sin and grief Fill me radiancy divine Scatter all my unbelief More and more thyself display Shining to the perfect day Alleluia, Alleluia Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and a kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading in the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 25th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison, and visited you. And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food, I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life.
Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week, which we kept as Bible Sunday, I mentioned King James, the sixth of Scotland and first of England, and how he commissioned a translation of the Bible into English that would be authorised for use by the church and available to all people. And how he insisted that the translation should emphasise the nature of kingship and authority in a way that would reinforce the structures of state and also the structures of the church and of episcopacy in that age of reformation. Only a few years after the publication of the King James Bible, a Welsh poet who became a priest in the Church of England, George Herbert, wrote the hymn which we will sing as our final hymn today. King of glory, King of peace. The words of that hymn reflect the emphasis of the then new translation of the Bible on the kingship of God and of Christ. Herbert expresses the utter loyalty and allegiance not demanded but deserved by God. And his, Herbert's, utter willingness to offer such loyalty, love and service with every word and every action. Herbert in humility recognises his sin but also recognises that through Christ who shares the glory of God and is the giver of God's peace that his sins, as he puts it, have been cleared by God who alone has that power. Underlying the words of this hymn is Herbert's understanding of divine power, power that is wielded only for good, wielded only in love and in justice. God is the God of righteousness and steadfast love. It's the power which St Paul describes in his letter to the Ephesians. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, so that Christ's power is total. And so from the earliest days of the church we have this image of Christ in majestic glory, enthroned with one with God. But of course, Jesus was enthroned in a very different way at the end of his earthly life. In Matthew's Gospel, the story of Jesus begins with the wise men coming to Jerusalem and asking Herod, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? And at the end of the Gospel, it's Pilate who puts an inscription over Jesus on the cross that reads, The King of the Jews. While well, Jesus doesn't claim the title King in his preaching, he does tell stories about a kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And in some of these parables, he describes the ways in which earthly rulers abuse their power and how divine power can only ever be used justly and lovingly. It's only towards the end of Matthew's Gospel, in Jerusalem, in the few days before Jesus' arrest, that he proclaims the prophecy we heard this morning, that the Son of Man will come in glory with his great retinue of angels. And the following passages describe how he is to be crowned and enthroned. 
the coronation of kings and queens in this country over the centuries follows a particular tradition. At first, the monarch is stripped down to a simple cotton tunic and is anointed with the oil of coronation. And then the monarch is dressed with a golden tunic and a red robe and given the symbols of state, the crown and the scepter. In the passage in Matthew's Gospel following today's Gospel reading, Jesus visits the house of Simon the leper. And it's there that a woman has an alabaster jar of hugely expensive ointment, which she pours out over Jesus' head and anoints him. And after his arrest, the soldiers, before they crucify Jesus, play a mocking game, a mocking coronation. They strip him, they put a crown of thorns on his head, they dress him in a purple robe, and they put a reed in his hand and feign loyalty with the words, Hail, King of the Jews. But these mocking symbols are taken from him, and Jesus is crucified and the cross becomes his throne. But that strange act of coronation marks the beginning of the rule of Christ, the reign foreseen by Ezekiel when he proclaims God's intention, I, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, I will seek the lost, bring back the strays, I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. Ezekiel lives at a time when the kingdom of Israel was overthrown by the king of Babylon. Generations before, the people of Israel had become discontented with God's rule, had asked for an earthly king to lead and shepherd them. But after the successes of the shepherd king David and his son Solomon, there had been a line of kings who were given the title of shepherd of God's people, but who had become more and more corrupt, misusing their power and abusing their people. And the exile into Babylon was seen as a punishment from God. But the prophet Ezekiel declares that God will take back the role of being shepherd and he will send his Messiah to be prince among his people. And so the reign of Christ begins with an act of utter love, of Christ dying for his people. And God would raise him from the throne of the cross to the throne of divine glory. During his earthly ministry, Jesus had spoken about finding the lost sheep, and he claimed the title, the Good Shepherd. In the passage we've just heard, Jesus lays out what it means to be part of his kingdom, that we serve Christ by serving those in need. Jesus says, when you fed the hungry, when you give water to the thirsty, when you welcome the stranger, take care of the sick, and so on. Jesus doesn't say, when you do it to the least of my subjects. He says, when you do it to the least of these who are members of my family. We are heirs with Christ in the family of the kingdom. And what Jesus describes is the work of righteousness and steadfast love. It's the work of God, but it's the work God gives us to do, to participate with him in the kingdom. Unlike King James, what we do is not to reinforce our own status, rather is to be more like George Herbert, willingly offering to God what God deserves, our very selves in every word and action. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. As we keep this feast of Christ the King, we give thanks for his promise that we will hear his call, Come you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. We pray for the Church, the body of Christ in the world, in all its forms, and for all who accept Jesus as their shepherd, following in the way he leads. We pray for ourselves in this congregation, that we may be a sign of the kingdom in this community, a place of prayer and care for each other, and serving Christ by reaching out in help to those in need. We pray for Bishop Mark and the clergy and people of this diocese, and for the Diocese of Argyll and the Isles in the process of electing a new bishop to be their shepherd in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We offer our prayers for the peoples of the world. We pray for those who are scattered as refugees, having to flee from persecution in their homelands. For the victims of violence and aggression, victims of war and racism, victims of abuse and neglect. And at this time, when the world remembers the Nuremberg trials of 75 years ago, we pray for all who have been victims of genocide over the years and for the survivors who carry difficult memories. We pray for just governments who will put an end to the language of aggression and speak the language of peace. We pray for our governments in Holyrood and Westminster, for their work in dealing with the pandemic and for helping people and businesses cope with the economic pressures and for all who work to further the good things of God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are our neighbours, close by and afar, who are in any kind of need. The hungry, the thirsty, those trapped in poverty, the lonely and the stranger, that we may be ready to help them as we are able. We pray for those who are sick, those with chronic pain, those for whom there is no cure, and those who are close to death. We remember those who have asked our prayers, Anne Wignall, Mary Mulligan, Ilsa Redmond, Heather Cuthbert, Julia Sinclair, Father Gerald. And we pray for those who care for them in hospital or at home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we commend to your eternal care those who have departed this life, those whose hope and faith was in your promise of the resurrection. We remember those of this congregation whose ears mind is at this time. 
Louisa Wilkinson, Kenneth Archibald McCallum, Kenneth Fraser Mackay, Donald McLennan, Christopher McConaughey, John Cuthbert Fraser. And we pray for those recently departed and ask your loving care for those who are bereaved. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As we pray for the fulfilment of your kingdom promises in this world and in the world to come, we offer our own prayers for ourselves and our loved ones in our own need, and that you will give us grace to help others in their time of need, that in serving them we are serving you. Heavenly Father, accept all our prayers which we offer in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Christ the King is the giver of peace. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem draws all music but its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless King through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of love, behold his hands and side, those wounds yet visible above, in beauty glorified, no angel in the sky can fully bear that sight, but downward bends his burning eye, and mystery so bright. Crown him the Lord of peace, whose power of scepter sways, from pole to pole that wars may cease, and all be prayer and praise. His reign shall know no end, and round his pierced feet, fair flowers of paradise extend, their fragrance ever sweet. Crown him the Lord of years, the potentate of time, Creator of the rolling spheres, ineffably sublime. All hail, Redeemer, hail, for Thou hast died for me. Thy praise and glory shall not fail throughout eternity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become the cup of our salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life endures are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. 
Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, citizens of your kingdom with Christ as our King, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. Son born in human flesh. He is the Word existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was given up to death, Knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your Son's command to recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last, in your new creation, we enter into our heritage, in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. We do not presume to come to this, your holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by this most sacred body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. takes away the sin of the world, happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Come, Lord Jesus, in the fullness of your grace, and dwell in the hearts of us, your servants, that adoring you by faith, we may with joy receive you, and with thankfulness and love abide in you, our guide, our bread of pilgrims, our companion on the way. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. And his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and bring you into the fullness of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. King of glory, King of peace, I will love thee. And that love may never cease, I will move thee. Thou hast granted my request, thou hast heard me. Thou didst not my working breast, thou hast spared me. Wherefore, with my utmost heart, I will sing thee, and the cream of all my heart, I will bring thee. Though my sins against me cried, thou didst 
to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O glorious Archangel Michael, Chief and Commander of the Heavenly Hosts, Guardian of Souls, Vanquisher of Evil, Servant in the House of the Divine King, and our glorious Patron, who shines with excellence and superhuman virtue. Deliver us from all evil and enable us by your gracious protection to serve God more faithfully day by day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the divine assistance remain with us always and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.